I have this opportunity to fish with Nick, one of the best guys in Key West. So we're looking to go down and do what he thinks is right, and, and what he thinks is right is we're gonna go look for a grand slam. I gotta tell you, put a smile on my face. Nick is up for the challenge, and uh, so am I. Man, I'm pumped. Yeah, me too, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Let's do this thing, man. There's one. That a boy, Jared. That a boy. So, Cap, do you think we'll see anything here? Tons of bait in here, man. I think this would be a sweet little place for him to grow up. Nice work. See you, man. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> Starting to get late in the day. Fishing's getting tough. We're losing our light. And all we need is one more, one more bite. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. No, no, no. Keep going slow. Here he comes. Keep going, keep going slow. Keep going. Got him. Pull. Let him go. Nasty. Nasty, buddy. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. He's got a strip. Oh yeah. my god. That's awesome. Got him, baby. Nice. Strip. Strip. Easy. Yep. Oh, nice, baby. Woo! Yeah. It's all the way over here. Yep, yep. Go. Nice. Woo! Jumper. See ya. Woo! <laughs> got him. Got him, buddy. We'll just see where this goes. Yeah. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Nick Labadee is what I call the silent creeper. Just this phenomenal guide and phenomenal guy. I mean, he's about my age. Uh, we actually kind of look similar, but he kind of gravitated to Key West, the lower keys, and uh, has been there for about eight to 10 years, and he's just starting to take over that place. Anything else? Uh, I think we're all right. I just did a bonefish and a tarpon rod here just to have. Perfect. I got, I think we're good on the spinners. We got a bunch of crabbies. Got leader and stuff. Man, I'm pumped. Yeah, me too, buddy. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. Let's do this thing, man. I truly feel like I'm on a charter. You are. And I'm in the best of hands. <laughs> I love it. Well, we'll see about that. I love it. It's gonna be fun, dude. It is gonna be fun. You hear me? Chasing down a slam here in uh, Key West in the Florida Keys. That's gonna include a tarpon permit bonefish. Really is a true test to both angler and guide um, to be able to not only find those fish, but have someone that knows how to read each one differently and catch them and get them all the way to the boat. Each one chases their own challenges and um, it, it really is an accomplishment. Should be right about in the house here if they're gonna be here. Really not seeing like any of the, the kudas or any of that other stuff either. You know, I, I have this opportunity to fish with Nick, one of the best guys in Key West. So we're looking to go down and do what he thinks is right. And, and what he thinks is right is we're gonna go look for a grand slam. I gotta tell you, put a smile to my face. Nick is up for the challenge and uh, so am I. See that white spot? Yeah. So every once in a while there'll be like a single on that. And there's it's either a permit or a cuda. I see what you're looking at. Yeah. Looks like a permit. He's eating it right now. Got him, buddy. Oh, got him, buddy. Get the other rod if you want. Now that's awesome right there, man. That was cool, dude. Yeah, he was he was about it. <laughs> he was about that crab life. Yeah, he was. Yeah. No double haul involved in that one, bud. No, sir. That's it. Cutie. I don't care, man. We that, don't discriminate on this boat, no, bud. No, 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 no. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Would you say permit your favorite fish? Uh, pretty into them there, bud. Pretty into them. Yep. It's tough to have a favorite, though. They're all awesome. It's just so rewarding when you get one of these suckers. That's, I think that's one of my favorite things about it. Okay, I think, I think you're about to be right here for them. 
Yes, come to daddy. Oh, down the hatch. Ooh, easy there, bud. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, dude. Man, that's awesome. Cute little guy, huh? Beautiful. Uh, let's just say he loved the crab. Yeah. He, he loved the he, crab. He ate it twice, he said. He came back and, and sucked in the second time. That's awesome, man. Look at that beautiful oh, thing, right? Nice work, dude. Beautiful little permit. Oh, little cutie pie. Awesome, man. Beautiful. I think he's already, and that's a, my favorite part about permit, man. They just will swim off like that. Oh, they're tough, dude. Dude. Thanks. Nice work, man. Thanks, man. That was awesome. Can I get another Way one? Way to go, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Look at the size of that fish. This is a beast, dude. Beast mode. Fish the legend. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Maverick Boats, Fish, the Legend, Yamaha, Reliability Starts Here, Costa, See What's Out There, and by Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, bringing science to the fight. And now, 60 seconds in the mill house. We are with the great Dale Perez today. Dale, you've been guiding for 52 years. That is correct. My last two gold cups I fished with you. So how'd you know about the keys? Have you always, did you always hear about it? I used to come down here in the early 60s with my family. I met a captain that fished out of the Faro Blanco, Cal Cochran. Right. And one afternoon, Cal Cochran took me out on the flats and took me to a flat we call the wing wall flat at the seven mile bridge on the bay side. And I was on the bow and there were three permit and I had a crab. I hit the three permit on the head and spooked them. Then we go a little farther and there's some bonefish hit the bonefish on the head and spooked him. But Andy, when I fell in love, that was the passion in my life. And I swore if my baseball career failed me, I was coming down here and I wanted to be a guide. Even though you didn't catch a fish, just seeing them just and spooking them. them. It was the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. To watch this and other full-length episodes of the Millhouse podcast, go to YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. All right, man. Bro. Let's go see if we can find us a bone. Thanks, bro. Nice work, man. Along with a great fishery comes great guides. And Nick Labate is one of them. I love being out here. I love spending time on the water. I'm truly blessed to be able to make a living at it. Obviously, Jared is, is an incredible uh, fishing guide. It's really a, a lot of fun for a guy like me to um, not have to have a ton of communication with, with what's going on with the fishing. Um, you know, he sees a fish. He we both know the best way to take the shot. And um, we can just really kind of enjoy our time out there and, uh, and have some fun with it. I think it was a little cuda, but I definitely couldn't tell for sure. If he was a bone, he was small. There is one. That a boy, Jared. That a boy. Oh, come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
<laughs> yeah, we were talking about how we like catching them in the deep water. Yeah, and all of a sudden you catch them in a foot, foot of water in the sand. The classic run right at you as fast as you can. Come on, baby, run, 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 run. Coming right at us right here. There he is. It's almost, almost beach it right here. I might, I might stand in the water here. It, yeah, yeah, you're good. You should be good. Dude, I love it. Right back out again. Dude, in the backing again, huh? I mean, I'm telling you, it's not, it's not really loose. Feisty guy. Wow. I'm not even kidding though. It's not loose. No, we got all day, buddy. Take your time. Oh, Jared, you absolute sniper, buddy. Oh, yeah. Real snipe. <laughs> Real. It's not a bad little fish, though. It's really not. We don't have where you can stand in the water like this back up For in the Alvarado. Balls? No. Now you sink up to your waist. Oh, that's cool. Go, oh, boy. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nice little chunky one, man. Yeah, man. Look at that. Nice, man, dude. Get all of that there. Yeah, buddy. Right? Thanks for playing, dude. Thanks for playing is right. Look at that thing. Beautiful Gorgeous fish, dude. Gorgeous fish. That's awesome. Nice work, dude. Beautiful. Nice work. See ya, man. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> I mean, it was cool. I mean, like you said, like this, where we are, the setup, white sand, I mean, it's hard packed. You know what I mean? We might have to. I might have to look for a tarpon now. I think I think we have to. Have to look for a tarpon. Yeah. All right. I mean, hey, it's my vacation, right? That's right. I'm a quiet right here. <laughs>It's all about the water. And healthy habitats. And effective management. Conserving our flats fisheries takes all three. That's why BTT is working on all of them. If we do less, we'll lose. And so will the next generation. You can help us achieve the grand slam of conservation by supporting Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. Become a member today at BTT.org. And join us as we bring science to the fight. To learn more, visit BTT.org. When you make the kind of investment I have in boats, from my skiff to my contender, choosing the right trailer is everything. And I choose Ameritrail. They're built tough, man. You know, not only are they stylish and look good, and they have all these features, everything about it is done right. And it makes me feel comfortable trailing my boat down the highway. Ameritrail trailers. Load, launch, relax. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Shimano Fishing Products and G. Loomis Rods. Feel connected. Woo! Simred Chart Plotters. Go with confidence. Ameritrail Trailers. Load, launch, relax. And by Pathfinder Boats. Angler Driven. I grew up in Key Largo, which is like the first key coming into the Keys. And it's, it's more of the laid back and relaxed part of the key, upper Keys. But then as you go down, there'll be a little bit of a slow area, a little bit more relaxed area, and you get into Big Pine and Big Torch and Sugarloaf, and you know, it's real relaxed, real kind of quiet. There's no, nothing around, not many restaurants. They're all in Key West. Everything's in Key West. Key West is, is the Bourbon Street. 
There's a, there's a collection of critters of different type of people down in Key West, and you never know who you're gonna cross. You might even come across Spider-Man. I used to work for the Daily Bugle, but it turns out they're fake news. So now I work for Alex Jones. It is the, where everybody goes to hang out, go night crawling, bar hopping, good meals, you name it, right? You know, scooters, they want to go on the water, you have the jet skis, you have the parasail, you got the cruise ships. I mean, it's, it's chaos down there. And anywhere I am in the world, if I tell somebody, you know, they ask me, where do you live? I go, I live in the Keys. Oh, you live in Key West? No, 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 no. I live in Fort Keys. Fort Keys is 100 miles long. I don't live in Key West. They're like, well, I thought Key West is the Keys. I'm like, it is the Keys if you go on the vacation and go party. Starting to get late in the day. Fishing's getting tough. We're losing our light. And all we need is one more, one more bite. And uh, we decided to check another little baby tarpon spot. So, Cap, do you think we'll see anything here? I don't know, buddy. What's the percentage? 66.6? <laughs> Tons of bait in here, too, man. I think this would be a sweet little place for him to grow up. Are you kidding me? It's all, yeah, all the nice little current going through here. It's shaded. All the snacks. Snappers. Man manatee. There they are, tucked up in the bushes. Jared flings it on in there. Come on. Come on. There he is. There he is. And now all we got to do is actually get him in. Oh, that was oh. cool. OK, OK. I see you. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing here. Stay glued. As it went the leader. Oh. Oh. It's like almost we need to get one here. Just, I can't get a, I can't get a form loop because I'm gonna hit this thing. Come on, come on. Got a boy, got a boy. Come on, man. Great job, Jared. Great job. He's all the way over there, bud. He's still there. He's all the way over here now. This thing starts taking off all under the trees. Every time it jumps, your heart stops. You're like, is he going to stay on? I just need to grab this fish. I'm going to these trees. Hold on. Hold on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. No, no, no. Stay out of the bushes! Come on, baby. I think we got her now, at least out. Oh, no. Come on, come on. Okay, okay. Hold on right here. You're good, you can come down now, I think. Look at this other one right here. Come on, fish. Easy. Come on, fish. Easy, buddy. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Got him. Here you go. Here, call him. Get it, girl. Got him. Double. I insist on having a clean boat when I fish. It helps protect my tackle, helps protect everything about that boat. So when I choose a cleaner degreaser, there's only one choice Formula 88. 
Just take it down a notch there, cowboy. Silver Kings is brought to you in part by Maverick Boats. Fish, the legend. Woo! Get ready, might be one more. Get ready. Mako Reels, built to last, Not built to off. stop. There we go. Woo! And by Bonefish and Tarpon Trust, bringing science to the fight. That's what it's all about, That's what it is all about. Come on, step up. Where your grades at? Where your grades at? Oh, A oh. plus. Oh. A plus. And now, a minute from our conservation partner, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust. The changes we've caused to the quality and supply of fresh water entering our coastal waters have drastically impacted our fisheries and our way of life as Floridians. The harmful algal blooms like red tide are obvious results of these changes. But below the water surface, we are losing habitats at a rapid pace. But there's good news, we are making progress. The state of Florida and the federal government are investing in Everglades restoration like never before. Work is in high gear to restore fresh water flows, improve water quality, and send fresh water south to the right locations. Already, we have reports of better quality in Florida Bay and better fishing. We're also hard at work fixing water quality issues in other locations across Florida. A huge concern is Florida's outdated wastewater treatment infrastructure. Septic tanks and outdated sewage treatment plants are putting too many nutrients and contaminants like pharmaceuticals into our waters but help is on the way here too. Florida's new budget allocates $100 million per year to fixing this problem in the Indian River Lagoon, as well as significant investments in wastewater upgrades and septic to sewer conversions. It will take a while to fix these problems, but with your continued support, we'll make it happen. To learn more, visit btt.org. I think it's coming right to you on the side. Yep, you got it. Come on, baby. Come to daddy. Come on, baby. Come Hold on, baby. No, 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 no. No, no. Come on. They love those trees, man. You're like, you're right on that edge where you don't want to put too much, but you don't want to, you don't want to also want to get into it. Okay. All right, come in your side. I'm keeping her head up. I was gonna keep her head up. So they're gonna make you work for it. <laughs> work for it, baby. They're gonna make you work for it. Oh, come work on. for it. <laughs> come here, little girl. Nice job, dude. <laughs> oh, oh man. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, never wanted to hold. You so bad. Look at that, huh? Sure, nice. If work, you had to work for it, you work for it. Oh, get this fly out of the mouth. Nice job, buddy. All right. You got her there. Yeah. I... Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I went on it. That right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. Man. You talk about working for it. Woo! Woo is right. Jumped a couple off, some heart breaks. Oh man, you know, I mean, it's, it's blowing 30 miles an hour, man. <laughs> you know? Been wanting to fish with you for years and years, and then the first day we go out, you catch me a slam. And you know what? Well, I can't me, tell buddy. you the last time I caught a grand slam. Personally. Myself. Personally. Yeah, I can't even tell you. I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even tell you the last time I, that happened. So, dude, I think, and it, it wasn't, it wasn't like, oh, you hook them and they come out, oh, you catch them. Ran Way all underneath the, the trees, tree. all jumping over here, come back, come this way, Somehow come on got this him side. Out two different times. Just meant to be. Meant to be. I think we should head back to the marina. Let's do it, buddy. Let's go, man. Yes. 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 A grass flat at sunrise. 
where light and sky meet crystal clear water. For those who stalk the flats, it's a time of magic, when a slight ripple on the surface and emerging tail fin can set your heart racing. A permit turning to inspect your fly might be your only success on the day. So what is it about the pursuit of these fish that holds such mystique for anglers? It's a fish that commands kind of this dedicated focus. You gotta get inside their head a little bit. If you have the right fly and make the perfect cast, you might have a chance. This is not your average fish. This creature, the permit, is not an honest customer. The permit is so mystique because it, it is the hardest fish in the world to catch on fly. And every time when I think I'm starting to figure them out, they surprise me. You know, the further you get along in this sport, eventually all roads lead to permit. You, you run out of challenges, and 20 years into this game, I haven't run out of that challenge. Permit are found throughout the Caribbean, but it's the Florida Keys that have been the prime destination for pursuing large permit for decades. Legendary Keys guide Steve Huff helped to pioneer the sport of fly fishing for permit. Well, I started guiding in 68. I didn't know squat. I didn't have a gray hair in my head when I started permit fishing, so <laughs> now it's white and falling out, so. There were more permit around, certainly a lot more permit, but not many people were actually fly fishing for them. But nobody really knew, I don't think, or had studied or tried to become aware of how the permit were moving around on different tide stages and where they were on the fall and, you know, what, how they came onto a bank and all this stuff. Nobody was really doing that so much. Then, you know, I was mainly bait fishing them, and then this guy called me one time, Del Brown, and, and he said, I really want to do a lot of permit fishing. I want to do it with a fly rod. I said, he, he says, I understand, you know, we're, there's a good amount of permit. I said, hell yeah, well, let's do it. So we did. We started going after them, and we started messing with flies, different retrieves and all this stuff. Started catching them, and then started catching some more of them, and it kind of changed the whole uh, panorama of people's willingness to go do it, you know? They said, holy crap, these guys are catching them. They can actually be caught there, even though there's a good deal less fish. And the only reason I know that is I haven't been down there a heck of a lot lately, but I just hear people saying, oh God, we got seven shots today. And I go, I mean, back then we were getting, I, God knows if we had, had, if we had the knowledge that we have now, because we were getting some days 50 shots, some days 30 shots, you know. A slow day would be 15 or 20 shots, you know. So there was just a lot of permit around. I, I don't know, I can't put my, my finger on an exact point where project permit started, but um, it certainly came out of concern from anglers and guides about what was happening with the permit population. Permit are more impressive than ever to the Keys' iconic flats fishery, which generates more than 465 million annually. But since those early days, the angling pressure has steadily increased while the water quality and the amount of healthy habitat have decreased. Cut permit, permit. Our BTT approach that involves science to conservation to making change starts with our cooperation with anglers. Anglers help us identify problems they see on the water that then we can go to scientists and ask for them to evaluate. As we got into permit conservation, an immediate process we had to do was follow the permit to find out where they go, what was their path in life, hey, baby. where did they counter vulnerabilities that could cause the decline. So it, I think it just kind of came as a natural for, for Costa to step up uh, and say, hey, you know, this is an important signature fish uh, for the state of Florida and for the Keys in particular, for fishing guides. Like I just saw a little puff of mud real close to the boat, about 30 feet from the boat at 11 o'clock. There you there go. You go, there's one. one. Got one. 
you know, you look around the world and BTT is the organization when it comes to protecting, you know, flats fish. Easy, yep. That's a mature breeding fish that probably just came back from Western Dry Rocks this summer. Oh, yeah. At the time, not much was known about this elusive species. So the initial goal of the project was to understand the movement of permit in the Keys and to make sure that the special permit zone was large enough to adequately protect them. Guides, anglers, and scientists worked together, tagging more than 1,000 permit with dart tags and recording the captures. The data showed that the special permit zone was large enough, but with guides reporting continued declines in permit catches, it was clear that more research was needed. Working with stakeholder groups like BTT is a great way to get an idea of how anglers might feel about a particular topic. And BTT has been a great partner with the FWC because they help us get input about particular issues and they help us think about new ways to accomplish conservation. FWC and BTT work so well together because we bring science to the table. We bring unbiased, third-party academic science that they can use to make decisions. <laughs> Good work. Kill it, Aaron. Good work. Yes, sir. Yes, awesome. sir. Let's get another one. The next important step in Project Permit was to determine where permit feed and spawn in the Florida Keys. To do this, BTT scientists used acoustic transmitters to record movement patterns of 150 permit over the course of five years. The results brought into focus the importance of one spawning site in particular, known as Western Dry Rocks, a 1.3 square mile area near Key West. These are the, the paths of the Keys permit as they converge and go back to their, their flats after they spawn. I think from the study we've gotten over 500,000 unique detections from permit that we've tagged and that, that provides us with just an absolute treasure trove of information. This shows all the movements of all the permit compressed into one figure over five years. And even this, you can see where activity is really high and you can see how kind of everything's kind of converging at this one central point and that's Western Dry Rocks. Though permit are extremely hard to catch on the flats, they become very vulnerable at their spawning aggregations. And fishing those spawning aggregations causes a lot of problems. One, it disrupts their spawns, they can't get their hormones right to really make the act happen. And then also, with all that biological activity, there's also a lot of sharks around that are waiting for an easy meal of a distracted permit or a hook permit. So that, that is a major stress we've been working to resolve. BTT shared these findings with the Keys Guide and Angling communities and with FWC, informing the Commission's important decision to close Western Dry Rocks to all fishing during the April through July spawning season. All anglers from around the country also lent their voices in support of the seasonal closure of this critically important site. I really uh, feel for the offshore guys young in this situation because uh, I come from an offshore background. I'm the first generation born flats guy. Uh, my father did offshore for over 30 years. At the end of the day, you're closing one location that's going to help out. Like I said, I'm tired of hearing back in the day stories. We finally have a chance to let these fish spawn and grow. I want my children to be able to go out there and experience it the way I did when I was a kid. Been asking for this day for a while. <laughs> no school, big, big girl fishing with dad. Rock and roll! I think my dad likes permit because they're really hard to catch and it's really fun and I think when you release it you get this really good feeling and when you're in, you get your adrenaline going. Keep tight, Real. keep tight, keep tight, that's it. Yeah, there you go, that's it. That's a lot bigger than my first permit, Alice. <laughs> Easy, 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 bub. So I think that we're just in the opening salvos of this project permit, and I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing what's ahead with future pathways and, you know, following this fish and this story, because I think it can be impactful. What we're doing here can mirror and match what other species and other fisheries need, not only in the United States, but elsewhere throughout the world. 
uh, and hopefully this knowledge and experience that we're having, you know, that can be replicated elsewhere. Pull, 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 pull. Keep coming. Keep coming. Pull up hard now. Easy. Give it all you got, Alex. All you got. <laughs> yeah! Woo! Oh my God, Alex Benson! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that is big! That is really big! The success of Project Permit is the story of a time-tested approach to fisheries conservation. It's a story of research to find science-based solutions and collaboration with guides and anglers. It's a story of advocacy and cooperation with Florida FWC to effect much needed change, and all with the vital support of a visionary corporate partner, Costa Del Mar. South Florida's permit will prosper at the pinnacle of flats fishing now and for future generations of anglers. The interesting thing about what you would call an insane or a dedicated fly fisherman is that a lot of these people that I have fished over the years, incredible fly casters and financially secure, never had to worry about anything. They've, they've been everywhere in the world and fish for everything that swims from giant tuna in Nova Scotia to black marlin off Australia. And they all wind up either in South Florida or some tropical destination with a fly rod on their hand, trying to catch something that doesn't bite. <laughs> that's where we all wind up, <laughs> you know? Bring on the pain, so that's it, pretty much.